How's it everybody? Phil from Cabrina here. In today's tech tip video, I want to run you guys through the 2020 Cabrina Overdrive control system. Uh, there's a lot of new and exciting features as well as some tried and true bits here. So we'll be doing a full teardown and rebuild of the bar, which will cover every spare part that we offer. Uh, so it's pretty much everything that you'd ever possibly need to replace on the bar. Uh, the video might run a bit long, so if you guys want, you could always look down in the description below and skip ahead to the section that applies to the part that you're trying to service. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the harness loop here. Go ahead and remove the security pin, which is held in place by this single screw here. I like to go ahead and just use the same key that I use for surf fins. If you don't have one of these guys, it's like a two and a half mil key, I believe. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew this guy. And you wanna unscrew it pretty much all the way. All right, so with the screw nearly all the way out, I can go ahead and remove the security pin just like that, put it aside. And then I generally like to put the screw back in place, whether I'm riding, you know, for, for freestylers that like to ride with the pin out permanently, I still like to keep the screw in there just so I don't lose it. If you're actually replacing the security pin, slide it back in like so, and then just go ahead and screw it down. So you know the orientation is correct when you have the logo facing down, which basically faces the front of the loop. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in go ahead and screw this guy back down. Okay, and it doesn't have to be super tight. You don't want to strip this piece out. Um, the screw is just there to allow it as a pivot point to keep it securely in place. Okay, so I can just double check that everything works correctly and then it pivots just like it should. So now let's go ahead and remove the harness loop. Uh, it's this little screw right here. It uses the same size key. Go ahead and unscrew this. All right, so with the screw back nearly all the way out, uh, I can go ahead and remove the secured section on that side, and then obviously to undo the other side, I just activate the QR, pull that up, and then this slides right out. And then from here, I can go ahead and swap it out with the new replacement, or the bigger or smaller size if you're swapping out to uh, a bigger loop or a smaller loop, okay? And the, obviously the installation is exactly backwards of this. I like to actually uh, slide this piece in first and secure it in place, okay. and that way it doesn't move around and I can actually slide this other side in and if you take the screw all the way out, you can go ahead and see and confirm that this uh, grommet here is in the right position. When you slide it all the way in, it should just stop in place and you can see all the way through telling you that we're aligned correctly. So I'll go ahead and thread that screw back in, take the key and just screw it all the way back down to secure it in place. Okay, so for most of the other parts of the bar, specifically anything from you know above the spinning handle up to the CAS strap and servicing any of the recoil spring or in, uh, or in other cases the trim cleat system if you have the other ver version, the first thing to do to get to all this is to probably go ahead and remove the uh, spinning handle system. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that next. So just like we did before, I'm gonna use the same hex key and go ahead and loosen the screw that's in the spinning handle itself. You don't have to take it completely out. This screw is really just keeping the system tight so it doesn't unspin itself while you're using it. So with it mostly loosened, I can go ahead and actually just unscrew this and it just comes apart. Now you'll see here that the flagging line is still connected. So we'll go ahead and remove that from the bottom of the harness loop here. To undo the swivel and the power bracket seat from the loop, all you gotta do is slide the power bracket seat up so it's out of the way and then just loosen this loop around the swivel. With it loose now, I can go ahead and just push the swivel through and just let it come completely off. And take the power bracket seat, slide it all the way off. You just don't want to let go of this completely and let it shoot back up inside this line. So what we're going to do is just make sure that there's no tension on it, and then I can just leave it like that, and then I can slide this piece right off. Now that we have the lower section off, we can go ahead and slide the top half of the spinning handle up be aware that the anchor point for the D power main line sits around there. So as you slide it off, it'll pop off the loop. Just like this. And you can kind of just help it a little bit off of there. And once it's off, this piece just slides up and out of the way. And once it's off that piece, you can rotate it around until you see the, the two pieces where they mate. This is a two piece spinning handle. So if I slide the sec one section up and the other one down, it'll actually just come right apart. With the spinning handle off, now I can go ahead and remove the transition funnel. And to do this, you want to get this loop align, the deep power main line, up and over it. So I'll just help it over. You can pull the flagging line through that loop. And now you can just remove the transition funnel, just like this. Now with pretty much everything off of the lower section of the deep power main line, we can go ahead and pull it completely out of the bar. It's a little bit of a snug fit getting it through the center section here due to this extra little collar piece. 
So you don't have to force it, just gently pull through and wiggle a little bit and it should slide right out just like that. All right, so next we're gonna run through the bar end components real quick. Uh, for 2020, there's a new overdrive adjustment system. To service or adjust the system, you just wanna take this bottom piece on either side of the bar and pop it out. And if I pull hard enough, you can actually pull the leader line out completely to the point where it connects the bar end piece to the adjustment knots on the leader line itself. So if we were replacing or servicing this part, all we need to do is loosen the Lark's head here and you can slide it right off the leader line. If you needed to service or replace this piece, all you do is just coax the knot out here. And once it's out, you can go ahead and just pull the whole line out, just right out the bottom. And then threading the piece back in, if you ever needed to do so, real handy to keep around some fishing line. I'll have several different lengths usually around in the kit. I'm just gonna use a short piece here, double it back through the loop, and then take the ends and then feed them through the bottom of the hole there. And then I'll just go ahead and pull this guy through. Once it's through, I can just put a finger in and just pull this guy all the way through. And then once I'm at the end, I'll just go ahead and situate that knot so it sits inside that recessed cavity so everything fits and plays nice back together again. And then when reconnecting it to the bar end, these leader lines actually come as part of the bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and form the Lark's head here and just slide it on to whatever appropriate knot so that they both match and so obviously this is a tuning thing uh, so that the bars, all four lines will be even at full power. With everything reattached now, I can go ahead and just pull the line back through and then make sure you orient this in the whatever position that you prefer, whether it's the inside or the outside setting. And of course you want them both to match the left and the right. Pop it back in, let it click in place, pull up any slack, good to go. All right, so next we're gonna do the bar end bungees. Pretty rare that you'd ever need to replace this, but if you do, this is how you do it. So this is one long piece of bungee that goes up through into the bar, comes around the outer section here and then comes back out and then, then it's knotted down in this plastic piece. So what we're gonna do is undo the cover from here so that we can access those knots. So you're just gonna go ahead and pull that out. You can go ahead and rotate this guy around and see the two knots there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick one of them out, either or, whichever one seems to be easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide the excess out so I can work on this knot. Now obviously if you're replacing it because it's damaged, you can just cut it off and just pull the whole thing out. Okay, so with the knot out, I can go ahead and slide it out of the end here. And this is gonna pull back inside. It's up to you if you wanna use fishing line or not to tie off to the end of the old piece so that when you pull it out, you'll have line already running through there to fish it back in. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it without any fishing line. So if you don't have that, uh, it's just this is the probably worst case scenario, but it's totally still possible. Okay, you wanna just feed an end, pick a, pick a side, it doesn't matter which side. You want to try not to bend the EVA bar in, okay? So you just feed it down until you see it come out the bottom here, and we're going to pull about half of it out just so it's easier to work with, okay? From here, before I feed the other side, I'm going to go ahead and insert one of these sides into the plastic fitting, tie a knot off on it so it kind of anchors it as I'm working with the other side. And if the end gets too chewed up and frayed, you can just trim the ends off, and I like to do it kind of at an angle like this, just so it's easier to work with and easier to feed into these smaller holes. Once you pull it through like this, we're gonna go ahead and tie a simple overhand knot. Okay, I like to pull out enough so it's easier to work with. And again, just a simple overhand knot, just like that. And I wanna get it right up at the end. I don't want a really long tail sticking out on this knot because it needs to sit back into this little section here. And we need two of those, so we're gonna make it as small and as tidy as possible. I'll just kinda of roll it towards the end without pulling it all the way out, kinda of just like that. And if I'm worried about this excess, again, I'll just trim off just the, these frayed pieces. So I'm left just like that. And what I'll do is I'll just pull that in so it's anchored in and I got, see, can see I got room for the other knot now. And so now as I'm working with this other end, this piece can just sit out here and I know it's gonna just stay there, okay? As long as you don't pull it all the way through. It won't be able to go all the way, but you don't wanna suck it back up in there. Okay, so with the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this guy over. And while holding the bottom section, I'll feed this guy in. And again, probably wanna trim that off just a little bit. So it's important to note the routing here of the bungee system and the way it actually loops through. And I've done it wrong here on purpose to show you guys how not to do it. Um, so that when you feed it through, you wanna make sure that it's not looped on the outside here. It needs to sit in this inside groove in the bar end, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and just make sure it loops around this way so that when, it tighten, when we feed it back in and it tightens up, it'll actually sit in that groove. So same drill, 
and just go ahead and keep feeding it in until it pokes out the bottom of the bar end. Okay, so once I have the end pulled out here, before I feed it into the plastic fitting here and retie the knot, you want to make sure you put the pull tab back on. And the orientation really doesn't matter here. It should go on either way and be fine. So we're going to go ahead and thread this piece onto the, the bungee, get it out of the way. And I'm going to pull out a, as much as I can here so it's easier to work with. And just trim the end to a nice point so it'll feed into the plastic fitting better. Okay, once it's poked through, go ahead and rotate the line so it sticks up and you can grab it. Pull enough out so that you can actually go ahead and tie that same overhand knot that we did before. And we're just going to go ahead and cinch that down, getting it as close to the end as possible. So again, we want as little tail as possible because these two knots have to sit in that little piece. We'll get the two knots to seat in place and then we'll slide the pull tab back on over it. And the orientation is going to be this tab in the plastic gets rotated so that it matches this tab here. And then it should slide on serving as a nice little cover for those knots as well. Sits in that groove when we're done and we're ready. So now with the control bar part out of the way, let's go ahead and focus a little bit on the CAS trim strap, the power mainline assembly and the flagging line itself. Now obviously to replace the flagging line, you don't actually have to take the whole system apart like that. You can do it with everything intact. Since we have everything right in front of us, I'm just going to run you guys through it real quick. It's super straightforward. Once you disconnect the swivel and the power bracket seat from the harness loop, you can actually just pull the line completely out of the tubing. And so what I'll do is I'll just take that line, pull it out right here. So now it's free. So the only thing left securing it is the loop to loop connection here. And then of course the power bracket seat, which doesn't really affect the connection. I just want to go ahead and slide the power bracket seat up and out of the way so I can loosen this loop to loop connection. And I'm going to go ahead and just push those two loops together. And obviously the longer you've ridden that and the older it is, the more settled that connection will be. So it might take a little bit of patience. So I'm going to go ahead and push that apart, unthread the flagging line and just pull it right off. And that's what you're left with is the lower section of the, the front flying line. So replacing the line is obviously the same exact process, just in reverse. Um, while there isn't a top and a bottom to the line itself, they do have two different size loops generally spliced. Um, and if there is a bigger one, which is this one in this case, I like to use the larger loop at the bottom end of the line because that's the section that actually will pass through the swivel. So what we'll do is I'll attach using the smaller loop to the lower front flagging line. And the way to do that is you just slide the loop of the flagging line over and then take the opposite end and then feed it through the loop of the lower front line, just like that. Make sure there's no twists or kinks in the line when you pull this because you want this knot to be as small and as thin as possible. You want to just pull that nice and snug, making sure it's as thin as possible so it slides nice and easy through the D power main line should you ever need to activate the system. And then I'm just going to pull the power bracket seat back down over the, the loop to loop connection. To get it back in, you can feed it through like this. I tend to prefer the fishing line method, which is to take a section of fishing line here and generally I cut a section that's long enough to double back so that I can actually take the flagging line, feed the fishing line through just like this. If you're going to do it this way, you want to make sure that the line is not wrapped around the CAS trim strap. Okay, so it needs to be a direct shot right into the transition funnel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and feed that in until the line obviously pokes out the bottom of the tube. Okay, and the straighter this tube is, the easier generally this will be. I just have it kinked around like this so you can see it. And then I'll take both ends and just pull them and let the fishing line pull the flagging line all the way through the deep power main line. Obviously because the bar's all apart, I'm going to leave this like it is for now. Um, but if the bar was all together, we would actually feed this end through the harness loop. So we'll wait and do that at the end. All right, so next is the CAS trim strap itself. Uh, this is kind of a common wear and tear item depending on how often you use the trim strap. Um, so if you need to replace that, we're going to assume that you've already pulled the flagging line and disconnected it because in order to replace the trim strap, it actually runs or the flagging line actually runs through it. So let's go ahead and make sure that that's disconnected. We're going to go ahead and loosen the bungee section of the flagging line, make sure that's off. We're going to, in this case, pull the power bracket seat off just like so. Put that off to the side and then you can pull the lower front line out of the CAS trim assembly. In order to replace the CAS trim strap or the D power main line, you need to take not only the 1X flagging line section off, but the actually fixed section of the other lower front line. Um, in this case, it's just easier to pull it completely off, which is what we're doing here. So we'll just get rid of this. And now we're left with just the assembly itself.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the CAS trim strap from the D-Power mainline. You just need to unscrew this screw right here. Take the flathead, be careful and don't stab yourself like I have done many times. Okay, with that screw undone, you pull that guy out, disconnects the CAS trim strap so that now we can actually disconnect everything else. In order to get the funnel off and the recoil spring, we'll need to actually undo this two double arcs head connection here. So the way to do that is it's pulled pretty tight so you actually pull a little bit out, but you don't want to suck this line back up into the tubing. So what I generally like to do is put a screwdriver or something in there so it won't go all the way. And then I'll pull just a little bit out by kind of just rocking this triangle back and forth. Be careful that that screwdriver doesn't fall out like it just did. What we're trying to do here is create a little bit of slack so that you can loosen these up and then slide this piece off. So with that guy off now, I can actually take this piece uh, with one hand holding the funnel and one hand on the spring as you just unscrew the two from each other and as you're pulling them apart it should just pop off okay so even though it didn't phys physically come off the tubing you can see that this spring is now separated from the funnel all right so with the triangle off we're going to go ahead and move that out of the way to finish removing the cas strap we need to remove the recoil system first so let's go ahead and now that the spring is separated from the funnel we'll go ahead and pull this off it's a little bit of a snug fit so just make sure, again, you have something securing the, the looped end here so that you don't pull it through the tube. Okay, just gonna pull it off just like that. And now with the funnel off, you'll see that the spring comes totally off along with the overslide piece. That comes off as well. And then the CAS trim strap comes completely off the tubing. Okay, and now we're left with just the tubing itself and the deep power main line inside. Okay, so rebuilding the system is pretty straightforward. It's all the same steps, just in reverse. So we're gonna start with the D-Power mainline tubing. And if we're starting from scratch and replacing either the tubing or the CAS, you're gonna put this back together before we actually put it back onto the bar. So the first step is to slide this piece that holds the bungee, uh, the T-handles, orient them like so, feed the two loops through, and then slide it down onto the tubing. After that goes on, you wanna take the overside piece and go ahead and thread that on as well. And then once that's on, then of course the recoil spring is next. I find this easiest to do so it doesn't get caught on the spring as much as if you try and straighten those two loops align as much as possible, and then you go ahead and slide them in. Okay, just like that. So the next step is gonna to be to put the funnel back on. And what we wanna do is the easiest way to get it back on is to take the fishing line trick again and feed the fishing line through these two loops. I don't need a super long section of line for this, so this short section will do just fine. What I'll do is go ahead and pass this through both loops, just like so, double it back, and then I can pass this through the funnel just like this. And you wanna make sure it goes through this smaller section here. I usually like to start this onto the tubing, just like that, with a little bit of uh, slack in the line. And once it's started, then I can continue pulling the line in. Once we get almost all the way, you can look down inside the bigger cavity and make sure that the tubing is lining up properly. And kinda of you can feel when it's actually se seats in there just right. And then the next thing that I'll want to do from this point is to go ahead and attach the triangle. This guy needs to go back on and it's easier to do that while you still have uh, too much of these loops actually showing. So we'll make the Lark's head and just pass that guy through and then same thing for the other one. Both of them are done, looking good. Next step is to go ahead and secure the recoil spring back onto the funnel and that's done in reverse just the way we took it off. So we're going to try and screw it on and just feel like you're tightening it on there and you'll feel it and hear an audible click when it actually goes on there, just like that. So when reattaching the top of the CAS, the webbing part, to the triangle, you wanna make sure that the routing is where it needs to be and it's not twisted or wrapped around the wrong direction, okay? So in order for it to function correctly and not get bound up, you just wanna make sure that nothing's twisted. I generally like to pull it pretty snug so I could see that the lines are exactly how they need to be and which means that this is how it needs to attach, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw in there to secure it. Screw that down so it's nice and snug, not going anywhere. And one final check reveals that we are all good and ready to go. All right, so now that we got the CAS trim strap and the D-Power mainline assembly back together, uh, we're gonna go ahead and thread this back in through the bar so we can assemble the harness loop or modular fireball or slider system, whatever you have. But the first thing is first is to put this back into the bar so that we can attach the top half of the spinning handle. So this will thread back through the bar just like when we took it out. And before we can attach the 
transition funnel and the spinning handle parts, uh, we need to loop this line over and we need a little bit more line out here than what's actually showing. So in order to get this little bit of extra line out, what I like to do is just put something in there like a screwdriver or something, pull out as much as you can and just fold it over and hold it with your thumb. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this off. So I'll take the transition funnel and we'll just slide this over the top of the tubing. It only really goes on one way. You want this opening here on this side with this Y to face the, the depower main line itself, okay? You slide that over the top and then take the loop of line and just slide it right over the top of the transition funnel. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take the top half of the spinning handle and reassemble that. One side fits really big and loose and the other side clamps right onto the tubing, okay? So that's the side we're gonna put on there. Is you just wanna pop that on so it stays and then take this other piece and slide it onto the top till they key together. And the top half of the spinning handle here only orients one direction with the transition funnel. And you wanna think about it so that this little loop, or excuse me, this little lip will actually is where the deep power main line sits. So you wanna rotate that around and this section keys right into this of the transition funnel. So I'll push those two together and I put, as I push the top half of the spinning handle down onto the transition funnel, I'm gonna take this loop align and just guide it onto this lip. Okay, so with it seated correctly, I'll go ahead and push those two together. And now that it's in the correct place, I'll go ahead and hold that in place as I release the clamps. And as I straighten this whole system out, it'll pull everything nice and tight and into place. And now we're ready to reassemble the harness loop, thread the landing line back in. And so let's get started with that. So when reattaching the lines to the CAS trim strap, the two front lines definitely have a correct orientation. There is a side for the power bracket seat and the 1X flagging line. The longer side is actually for the power bracket seat, which holds the 1X flagging line. So we're gonna go ahead and first attach the fixed side. And the way to do that is just take one end of the line. So we'll shove that through, exposing the loop. Take the other end of the line and feed it through that loop. And then just pull it all the way through. And then when you get to the end here, you wanna make sure that there's, it's not twisted. See like it is here now. You wanna undo any of those twists so that when you pull it through, it forms a nice clean loop connection. No twist, no kinks. All right, so now that we have the fixed side attached, we're gonna go ahead and put the 1X flagging line side on. And again, it's gonna use this longer side here of the stainless piece. So the first step is to actually thread the flagging line through the hole, and then we're gonna attach the power bracket seat. It's designed to be a snug fit, so the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and thread that short piece of fishing line through the loop and then feed this through the power bracket seat, starting by going into the skinny top section and then pull that line through. So with the power bracket seat installed, we're gonna go ahead and put the bungee section of the line on. And to go ahead and do that, I wanna make sure and identify which side is which. Again, these loops are generally two different sizes. And so I'm gonna take the larger loop and orient that at the bottom. So we're gonna do a loop-to-loop -loop connection here using the smaller loop. To do so, I'm gonna go ahead and thread the smaller loop of the bungee line over the loop of the flying line, and then take the larger bottom section of the bungee line and thread it through the loop of the other one. Simple, standard loop-to-loop -loop connection. And we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that that knot is nice and tight and as thin and as small as possible. Okay, I can pull that up into the power bracket seat to set it, and now the only thing left to do here is to thread the line actually into the tubing. So to do this, you wanna make sure that the routing is correct, meaning that it's not twisted or turned around in any way so it has a straight, clear shot right into the, the top of the funnel here. So I'm just gonna stretch everything out. I can clearly see that this is the way it needs to go. And again, the fishing line trick is your friend here. So I'm gonna take this longer section that I've used before that's enough to actually fold it over in half. So I'll double back on this. Go ahead and run one end of the line through the lower section of the loop double it back over, and I'll go ahead and just feed this into the deep power mainline tubing, right into the top of the funnel here. You wanna continue feeding this line through until it pops out the bottom of the spinning handle assembly. And if you encounter any resistance at all, just pull a little bit back out and kinda of twist and turn around until it finds its way out. Okay, once both ends pop out like that, you can go ahead and pull that through, and we're gonna pull the bungee line section all the way until it pops out the bottom. And remove the fishing line, and now we're ready to assemble the loop on. For this part, it's pretty straightforward. You're just gonna take the end of the bungee line and feed it right through the harness loop assembly until it pops out the other side. Before I thread that on, I generally like to secure this so it doesn't go anywhere and I don't accidentally suck it back up. So I'll go ahead and put the lower power bracket seat on using the same fishing line trick as before, using that small section, doubling it over and feeding it right through the top of the power bracket seat. And with the line pulled through, I can go ahead and install the leash connection point now. To do so, you're just gonna thread this through the hole 
and then feed the leash connection point back through the loop itself. And then you can pull all this back together again, just like so. So now that won't go anywhere, no matter how hard I pull it. So now I'm free to work on this part, which is really just threading these two pieces of the spinning handle back together. And you don't have to over crank on this. You just want to basically screw it until it stops and it should line up with all the edges. And there is a little hash mark here on both sides of the spinning handle that they should match up. This little hash mark here next to that one there and everything's even. That's all we need to do. Final step to secure this is just to tighten up that grub screw using my fin key. And again, all this is doing is keeping it from unspinning so you don't have to crank on this. It's just going into plastic so you can strip this out if you force it too hard. So I just want to make sure it's snug. That's it. And now it doesn't unscrew. Ready to go. So we're on to the trim light system now. Everything else pretty much about the bar and the control system is identical, short of this little area right here. So let's just say you need to replace either the trim line that runs through the cleat or you're servicing uh, this upper section in some way. Everything else is identical up to this point. You'll just remove the flagging line if you need to. And again, you just slide the power bracket seat up out of the way. Push this loop to loop connection together. Separate the 1x flagging line. You can actually pull the power bracket seat off and then to remove the trim line if you need to. If it's an old line that you're just uh, replacing completely, then obviously you can just cut it off. Let's assume you're trying to service a part here. If you're trying to save this, all you're gonna do is just pull that out, expose the knot, undo the knot. Once the knot is undone, you can actually pull the handle off and then with the handle off, the line will come out of the cleat. Once it's out of the cleat, you can actually remove it from the pulley section. And generally, most of the time, unless you're replacing that line, there's no need to take it off, so I usually just leave it. And then to replace or to remove the trim line if you need to, it's just a loop-to-loop -loop connection here. Again, you're just gonna push this through, and the tricky part sometimes for some people is to get it over this webbing piece. And so usually what we do is I just take a screwdriver and just kinda help guide it over that section. Okay, so once you get it over the webbing, Go ahead and just slide the line all the way out and off the two loops. If you needed to actually replace this section of depower main line for a trim light cleat, it's the removal process is exactly the same as the recoil we just went over, and that's just to remove the lower section and to pull it out the top of the bar. To get everything back together, the first thing you'll want to do is put the trim line back on, and you just want to take the loop of the trim line, put it over both loops coming out of the cleat, and then feed the end of the trim line through both of those loops. Pull it all the way through. It's easiest if you try and fold the trim line in half right towards the bottom there by the mark cloth to get those two loops over the webbing. Okay, once you have it past the webbing, go ahead and pull that. Okay, you want it to sit nice and clean evenly, just a nice simple and clean loop to loop connection just like that. With the trim line installed, you can go ahead and route it through. The routing is always through the section with the ear for this uh, power bracket seat first. So I'll feed the tail of the line through, pull it back over, and then through the cleat. And if you've done it correctly, the reason you feed it through that way is so when the safety line comes through here, it goes straight down and pass directly into the tubing. So we'll take the handle for the trim line, thread it back through till I can see some of the line there. I'll grab that extra tail of mark cloth tape, pull it through, and you want to pull it all the way through until this little section comes out with the bungee on there because it makes it easier to tie the knot. And you want to do figure eight knot. Once you tie the knot, knot it down below that section and then pull the handle back all the way through like that. That part is done. And then you just got to put the flagging line back on. That is simply put through the stainless piece just like this. Power bracket seat gets threaded back on. And then again, we just proceed with this loop-to-loop -loop connection, which is taking the bungee line over the 1x flagging line and then push the loop of the opposite end of the bungee line through there, making a simple and clean, small loop-to-loop -loop connection. Slide the power bracket seat back down. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the long section of fishing line now to thread the bungee section of the 1x flagging line back into the tubing. Fold all the excess out of the way with the cleat and the trim line. Okay. Go ahead and feed that through until it pops out the other end. And then I can just pull that all the way through until the line pops out. Procedure at this point is exactly the same, just as it was for the recoil. I'm gonna go ahead and attach all the, the power bracket seat, the swivel, and we're good to go. All right, so that pretty much covers it. If you guys should have any questions about this, feel free to email us at support at cabrinakites.com. And be sure to check out the rest of the range at cabrinakites.com. Look forward to seeing you guys on the water. Aloha.